Welcome to the Ringer Podcast Network. I'm Liz Kelly. We wanted to remind you to check out the Ringer's YouTube page. We're publishing new original videos all the time, including a new This Is Us parody called This Is Bus, featuring some of your favorite Ringer employees like Bill Simmons, Jason Concepcion, and Chris Ryan. And on Friday, we published a video breaking down the staff's favorite moments of 2018 in sports and pop culture, ranging from A Star Is Born to the Philadelphia Flyers mascot, Gritty. These videos and more can be found at youtube.com slash The Ringer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I have the only gun on board. (laughs) Welcome to Con Air. Yes! After serving the last of his sentence... Cameron Poe is taking the first plane home to his wife and daughter. Today's flight is a special one. We're populating Louisiana's Felton Penitentiary. These guys are the worst of the worst. What happened? We caught the plane, man! Welcome to Con Air. This summer, check your weapons. Take your seat. Isn't that your car? And say your prayers. Con Air. Directed by Simon West. Thank you, and have a pleasant flight. Hey, Bill Simmons here. Shea Serrano is here. Chris Ryan is here. I think this is the best movie ever made. I realized that this morning (laughs) as I watched it again. Some people say it's The Godfather. Other people say Citizen Kane. I don't know. This is an amazing movie. I forgot how good it was. I hadn't really watched it from start to finish in about two and a half years. That's my fault. And uh, it's just wonderful. Is this everything you've ever wanted in a movie, Shay? Yes, this is everything. Neither one of the movies that you mentioned a minute ago have an airplane prison in it. No. So they can't be number one. It's an airplane prison. Airplane it's prison. It's a flying jail. An airplane prison break movie. Not one of those movies need? has Steve Buscemi joking about Sweet Home Alabama. While it's playing on an airplane prison, no, neither one of those movies have bald no. John Malkovich dropping gems on everybody or mulleted Nicolas Cage just doing just roundhouse in, just kicks being. <laughs> and speaking with a Georgia accent. You know, we have this category when we do the rewatchables. Would this movie be better with Danny Trejo, Steve Buscemi, or Michael K. Williams? <laughs> Two of the we three people 66%. from that category. In this movie. I know. <laughs> that that alone might make it a rewatchables like Hall of Famer. It really might. This yeah. is first if ballot. Saul Rubinek was in it. Oh man. <laughs> so here's the plot. Honorably discharged Army Ranger. Boom. Cameron Poe. I'm in. I don't he's know from Alabama, he's... not from Georgia. No, yeah, Honorably Alabama. discharged. So he's sentenced to uh, eight to 10 years in prison for manslaughter after killing a drunken man who was one of three men who basically tried to attack him and harass his pregnant wife. Usually we save this for picking nits, but this is one of the craziest, (laughs) most ludicrous moments in the history of movies. Okay. Um, Honored guy, right? Right. Back from serving our country. Yeah. Just at a bar. Just out. These three fuckheads try to try to fuck with them basically at the bar. Yeah. They're just known degenerate awful people. They fall them out in a rainstorm. All three of them fight them. Mm-hmm. One of them pulls a knife. Mm-hmm. In self-defense, he punches and somehow kill it. Does the Mike Tyson punch. It kills the guy. He does the yeah, nose, the nose, in, the nose into the brain. And with for, a palm strike. And somehow goes to jail. Doesn't seem like he had great legal representation. It That's seems like what, yeah. he had the worst legal representation of all time. <laughs> the lawyer tells him it'll be tops a year. Yeah. OJ got off <laughs> and came <laughs> pro went to jail for 10 years. <laughs> and the uh, the judge says to him, this the is judge a says, quote. With your military skills, you are a deadly weapon and are not subject to the same laws as other people that are provoked because you can respond with deadly force. The lawyer should have known that. Yeah. He should have known. Are we sure he's not subject to the same law as civilians? He's discharged already. We have to look at Alabama state legal statutes. I'm not sure. If anybody here is an Alabama lawyer and wants to write in and let us know. (laughs) We had a lot of good lawyers chime in for the firm, but I'm not sure. That's true. We did get some good email feedback on that. What the deal is with first degree manslaughter. That guy was like, you're going to get four years. You'll do one. There have been other movies where that has been like a thing, like your hands are registered weapons. It's been said before. Well, that, and that's like kind of the premise around the lethal weapon part of Mel Gibson and lethal weapon. That he is the lethal weapon. Right. Yeah. Right. It just feels like if three guys 
are trying to attack somebody and that person defends themselves, that's enough in court. Well, the problem was they couldn't find the knife. Because one of the guys picked it up. He, yeah. yeah, he tells them the the. But he had a witness. Knife. They had multiple witnesses talking about how they were being she harassed ran away. at the bar. Remember? She ran maybe away she before the it. knife maybe comes she, out. She ran away to go get the guy in the restaurant. This was a this was a misstep a flimsy by, premise. By, by Nick Cage. Right? I think he we just got, got in the car. Serial season the car, four should be what happened in that parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and and what what Cereal how the four. Alabama penal system how the Alabama criminal justice how it system failed Cameron Poe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so he goes to goes to jail for eight years. It's paroled. For some reason, can't just go back to Alabama, has to get a ride on the flying prison jail right. with all of these convicts, yeah. which is also a loophole, but that's fine. The plane is called the Jailbird. Oh, I forgot to mention <laughs> the three people that, uh, the three degenerates that came after him, one of their cases for not liking him was chicken shit. Because of pussies like you, we lost Vietnam, I'll tell you that. That's yeah, my that's favorite the main guy in the world. <laughs> That's, he, and he throws guy. money at him. He's like, buy me a round. Yeah, buy me and my buddy. Also, I love that these people 22 years later in Alabama are mad about losing Vietnam. Yeah. It's, it's the topic <laughs> of conversation. I wonder, these drug assholes. I wonder, so when I watched this movie and I got to that part, I was like offended for Nicolas Cage yeah. or for Cameron Poe. I wonder if that's an insult that people say to military people all the time. Like, is that the lowest thing you can be like? In 97, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> this is this movie does a great job of making like anybody who's about to get like killed, get their leg broken, get the crap eaten out of them. They always say or do something completely despicable right before it, so that you're like, yes, right, smash the guy's nose, <laughs> right. <laughs> the uh, this has been a recurring action theme. Somebody who's a good person who served our country, mm -hmm. and that somehow rubs some degenerate at a bar the wrong way. Okay. It's like, how dare you devote your life to protecting us? You think you're better than me? Uh -huh. You think you're better than me, Cameron Poe? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it leads to, yeah, we'll hold that thought. Hold on. Uh, it made $224 million. Is that a, a what was the budget? $75 million dollar budget. Okay. Triple the bad. budget. That's yeah. not bad. 55 on Rotten Tomatoes. A little disappointed <laughs> in the general public out there. Mixed reviews. Roger Ebert reviewing the film for the Chicago Sun Times, three out of four stars. He's been on. He's he's got a few right on the nose. He said it moves smoothly and with visual style and verbal wit. The Ebert hot streak continues. Yeah, on he's, the he's with nine straight where we've agreed with Ebert. <laughs> Shay, true or false? This movie was nominated for two Oscars. True. True. Best original song. Yes, I can live. Do you want to sing it? I can live. How do I live without <laughs> That's Leanne, you? That's Leanne Rimes, right? No, it was yeah. Trisha Yearwood. Oh, Trisha Yearwood. Oh, no, Leanne Rimes was supposed to sing it, right? Yeah, they, like they, young, okay. they, young they, they bumped her. It was also nominated for Best Sound, Lost to Titanic in both Ugh. categories. Tough one, tough break. <laughs> Simon West was the director of his first film, Jerry Bruckenheimer's first movie without Don Simpson. Uh -huh. Jerry Bruckenheimer just goes on a... On a kind of uh, heat check run. Oh, yeah. He goes a little iso ball now. He boxed on Simpson out of it. He's just... <laughs> so, one of the things I love about this movie, it catches Nick Cage during one of the most epic rewatchable runs anyone's ever had. Yeah. It's the best three movie stretch. Three in history. Now I'm insulted. No, like just pure <laughs> without screwing it up. I, three I was movies. thinking seven. <laughs> Do the seven. Do the magnificent seven. Nick Cage, 95 to 98. Okay. Or 99, I'm sorry. Kiss of Death, uh -huh. which I'll defend to the death. Yeah, you know, you're not going to hear me. I fucking love that movie. Don't you curse at me. I love That's that movie. Season 11 rewatchables. <laughs> you're not better than me. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Are you in on Kiss of Death, Shay? No. Not Kiss of Death. Didn't like it or you I haven't like seen it. it? I didn't like it. Really? Yeah. Wait, which one's Kiss of Death? That's where Caruso, David Caruso, Nick Cage. There's no way you would have oh, liked this movie. Oh, I haven't seen this one. Yeah, you got to see that okay. one. Can I make that your oh, assignment thinking, for the weekend? Thinking, yeah, I'll watch it. What this a weekend. time for Caruso! We don't have to get distracted. Incredible Caruso in that movie. Uh, Leaving Las Vegas won the Oscar. The Rock, yeah, Conair, Face Off, the Holy Trilogy, three classics in a row. Comes off an Oscar and makes The Rock, Conair, and Face Off. <laughs> that's the three. That's and, the, that's and the three. I'm talking about. pounds of muscle. Yeah. That's well, the three best But Shay, don't stretch. sleep on Snake Eyes, 8mm, and Gone in 60 Seconds coming right no, after. No, Snake Eyes and 8mm and were like like fart noise. When was the last time I saw 8mm? I watched it, I don't know, a couple <laughs> years ago. Chris? 
I feel like you just I like I like eight millimeter too. I think Joaquin you might Phoenix just like especially it, especially an eight millimeter like. because of the machine, right? Like yeah. that's your guy. You're gonna see some things you can't unsee. It was a little too much. <laughs> Chucky it was a little Why too. Why has the rewatchables drawn you into this dark, erotic place <laughs> with eyes wide shut and eight millimeter? Eight millimeter is a great <laughs> movie. You can, I know. Machine. That's what I'm saying. You can't count those two if you're talking about like his rock. Okay. It's the rock. It's, well, it's the holy trilogy. It's yeah. face off. Yeah. I think the closest, the closest to him was Omar Epps. Omar Epps had the program in 1993. Yeah. Major League Two. He was great. Yeah. I, li- I like him a lot. And higher learning. Those three. I would back say to back that pales in comparison to it the does, Nick Cage but it's, trilogy. But it's close. I mean, other people have had some. <laughs> Clo- Clooney had Old Brother Where Art Thou, The Perfect Storm, and Ocean's Eleven. That's he pretty had that. amazing. But, pretty but in there, he had Spy Kids as well. He had like a cameo on Spy Kids. Okay. So that sort of taints it. But didn't Hanks have, Was it, didn't Hanks go... Uh, what was the baseball movie with Madonna? He had League of Their Own. And then he did Forrest Gump and Saving Private Ryan like right around the same time, right? No, it was, it, didn't he have, it was like League of Their Own, Philadelphia, Forrest Gump. Oh yeah, that, that was what it was. But Sleepless in Seattle, I think he might have had four in yeah. a row. And then Apollo 13. You know who got close? Jennifer Lawrence. Which she have? got close. She had the Hunger Games, the first Hunger Games and yeah. then Silver Linings Playbook. And hmm. then she she bumbled it at the it's goal line. It's tough to do three because they always make one bad one. She did or the, one at the end of the street. Which I is think bad. what makes this great is that he wins the Oscar and then makes those three movies. Yeah, most people like win De Niro the Oscar doing Raging Bull and then doing Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, and, <laughs> and like and like Commando right after it. And his hair is just going through a variety of phases yeah. as this is happening. Yeah. I think probably from the steroids that he was taking because he was. Massive or whatever PDs he was like, on. It, I don't think he's steroids. I think he's like Python blood. Like he does drugs that we don't even understand. Like special mm. things. Yeah, it's like the. I'm essence, with you on that. The essence of like a monkey, like dragon yeah, blood. Yeah, like it's, he got it. Somebody who had spent like time in a rainforest. Yeah, was where he got. He's his muscles. really ripped in Con Air. He's, he's jacked. Yeah. They dude. said, uh, in one of the things I read, they said he lifted weights during like between scenes and stuff. Like he was just constantly. I can believe it. And he's like doing pull ups all that stuff. Scott Rosenberg, the uh, screenwriter, he did Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead, Beautiful Girls, Con Air, Disturbing Behavior, and Gone in 60 Seconds in a five-year stretch. Massachusetts. Nice run for Scott him. Rosenberg. That's a nice <laughs> run. Ving Rhames. Bing. You talk about the great Bing. runs. Blood In, Blood Out. Yes. Dave. Pulp Fiction. Dave. <laughs> Kiss of Death. Mission Impossible, ER, Rosewood, Con Air. Mm-hmm. That's a nice five years yeah. for Bing. When did he do Baby Boy? After. After. That was like 2000. So um, here are the inmates. I'm just going to throw these out at you, give you your reactions. First of all, I want to know how long they spent figuring out the nicknames, like how many dinners Like that for was. the virus and stuff? Yeah. Cyrus the virus, like what should we call him? We need to... Who's our Malkovich? What's his name? It should rhyme. Uh-huh. Like what? What? Just what the process was? Mm-hmm. I would watch a documentary. Cyrus the Virus, played by John Malkovich. A plus. How yeah. do you describe him? A plus. What was it? What were his crimes? Oh, he's killed more men than cancer. Was like the big thing. Yeah, he, he's done it all. That's it how he un- starts. It. it was unclear what his specialty was. He's just yeah. a murderer. He said he's done it all: kidnapping, robbery, arson. Like it just goes extortion, but not rape. Yeah. He hadn't raped. Not rape. Not a rapist. That's good. Diamond Dog Ving Rhames. Um, who was kind of like a Black Panther, mm-hmm. but then and Denzel Washington was going to play him. Denzel in the movie Washington was going to play him in the movie, right? Probably was like the most likable from a crime standpoint of all the guys, like yeah. the most tolerable. He had he had some good points he brought up. Dave Chappelle is pinball, mm-hmm. lovely. Billy Bedlam, <laughs> Billy Bedlam, that's the best name of the bunch. So Billy Bedlam, who then said. shows up in the crew in Training Day, right? Yes, yeah, that's him. Yeah. For Billy Bedlam, they say, caught his wife in bed with another man, mm-hmm. left her alone, drove four towns over to his family's house, or his wife's family's house. You got to do it just house. like Cusack does, because he does it fast right here. All right. William Bedlam Bedford, caught his wife in bed with another man, left her alone, drove four towns over to his wife's family house, killed her parents, her brothers, her sisters, even her even dog. Even the dog. That's Billy Bedlam. Bedlam. Billy Bedlam. He was a good one. And then we have the Marietta Mangler, played by Steve Buscemi. Okay. Who shows up Hannibal Lecter style with like a whole, he's got a robot mask on and like it was clear he's not even seen daylight in 10 years. See, those people, 
saw Silence of the Lambs. They saw the mistakes that those cops made, and they were right. like, never again. Yeah, it's never, never, never again. <laughs> <laughs> he was effective because even the other prisoners were afraid of him. Yeah, yeah. He's getting on the plane there. When, like, when Ving Rang was, was, was nervous. Yeah, Ving, 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 Ving is nervous, nervous. You should be nervous. <laughs> Uh, Swamp Thing, he's the guy who flied the plane. Mm-hmm. Pilot. Flew the plane, I'm sorry. Sally Can't Dance, who we'll talk, we'll talk about in a little bit. Oof. And then uh, Johnny, 23, Johnny, 23, Johnny 23, played by the one, the only, the rewatchable's favorite. Danny Trejo. Great performance. Tough he introduction said they, to the wider consciousness. Yes. Of <laughs> he said, they yes. call me Johnny 600 if they knew the truth. That's Jesus. a lot. I don't know if Johnny 23 happens if they made this movie in 2018. I'm, no, because also you, you're, you're like aware of the evil on the plane. You don't need a serial rapist also on the plane. Right. He's not just a serial rapist, Chris. He has flowers yeah. on his arm for each victim, which is one of the most evil things I think that's ever just been casually thrown out in an action movie. Yeah. Because later, he, when it seems like he's going to go after the prison guard, he shows her the arm and he says, uh-huh. I'm going to make you... I'm going to be Johnny 24 or whatever he says. It's like, right. whoa, this is like too intense. Yeah. yeah. Could you tone it back? Could it be, could it just be like 24 banks you robbed or 24? Right. What I don't understand is why he didn't have more tattoos if, if, it's, if it's really Johnny 600. Like, why are you only giving yourself credit for the ones you got caught for? Yeah, maybe those are the on the record ones. I don't know. We'll never know what Johnny 600, um, Johnny 23. So <laughs> let's go to the, the categories. Most rewatchable scene. I think Nick Cage, the whole rainstorm, Nick Cage killing. (laughs) You like the opening? I think the whole fight, it makes me mad every time. I don't understand. He's got his, uh, his lawyer is the guy from Miami Vice. Yeah. And, uh, that just terrible advice, plead guilty. It'll be fine. Wasn't fine at all. They threw out the thing. It's super not fine. Don't plead guilty. Don't listen to the lawyer. Just in general. That's your advice? That's your, I would say like, go not way. guilty unless you're positive. If, unless he's like, I've talked to the judge. Here is what it'll be when you I plead guilty. I think that you would have some sort of like agreement between the defense well, and the That's usually how they do it. They the, wouldn't but just he be had like, no agreement. Let's, let's roll the dice when the judge that's gets it. That's what he yeah. did though. Yeah, I know. The he's judge like, just overruled plead, the judge everything. Be good. He's like, nope, that deal is out of here. The reality is Cameron Poe is kind of a dumbass. Yes. When I mean, you go through the movie, he's- First of all, just get in the car, get away from the three drunk guys in the rainstorm. There you go. Um, get the fuck off the plane. Yeah, get off. You don't need to be a hero. Yeah. Oh, oh, your your buddy Bubba Gump might might have a diabetic but seizure. He has the insulin. I'll see you later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> could could that diabetic seizure I'm out of here? <laughs> anyway, I have uh, Nick Cage kills kills the guy. Cusack scouting report for the inmates is phenomenal. Yeah, it's really great. I love it. I wish. They had flashed more graphics up and we could have seen more background like with Creed. each guy. <laughs> yeah, it should have been like six minutes long. I yeah. would have watched, I would have watched that forever. The uh the cons take over the plane. Have some thoughts on that. We'll save. The put the bunny back in the box crouch fight scene. Shay, you're the fight scene expert. Has mm-hmm. there been a crouch fight scene? We've where had you're cl- like you you basically <laughs> have to shrink to the size of we've had close quarter fight scenes before. Yeah. But this was the first crouch one I've seen. Usually they're mushed in tight, like in Mission Impossible when they're in the bathroom stall. Or they're fighting in like, the, in like one a, guy's in the like front seat of the car and another guy's in the back seat, yeah. like in the Raid 2. Um, yeah. But, yeah. but never like we're just both going to duck down yeah. and, and waddle at each other. Well, I loved it. I have written here just for Shay. Cruzito tries to escape. <laughs> <laughs> when he <laughs> Quick part for my guy. When uh, when Cruz, I just call him Cruz. I know yeah, he has a name real name, Cruz. but he's just a Cruz his for name me. Is Cruz. When he tries to steal the second plane, mm-hmm. and I chaos like that ensues. whole boneyard sequence. I like the whole like the whole like sequence where they're like trapping those guys, like the soldiers. Yeah, and then there's the plane explosion. Yeah, I like the part before that when he's explaining everything. Yeah, and the guy's like, "What's this?" It's like, "That's a rock. That's a rock." <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. okay, my bad. And then uh, the plane landing on the Vegas Strip. Yeah. Right. So I got those seven, unless you want to throw anything else. No, those are good. There's a clear winner here, though. What is the clear winner? It's Cusack doing the introduction. The scattering report. Yeah, it's, that's the one. That's you guys the, don't want to go honorable mention for the long montage of him writing letters back and forth to his daughter? I do like that. Dear Casey. Dear Casey. Dear Casey. I do like dear that. Dear Casey. Dear Casey. <laughs> first grade. Daddy <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. I like that she sent him, she sent him one letter that was like two words. Dear Daddy. 
Are you ever coming home? It probably took four weeks for the letter to get there. Also, did the yeah. wife stop writing the letters at that point? It was just, it's just, it's just daughter. Casey's writing? <laughs> pretty like loquacious first grader. There's a lot of unintentional comedy in that scene because there's one part where there's like a prison riot. Yeah. He's writing the letter. He's yeah. like, dear Casey, things are getting a little crazy <laughs> here. I just want to check in. Meanwhile, like mattresses are going over the balcony. I think that he rolls over and covers one ear. With yeah, yeah, hand. like that, that'll make the noise go down. What do you have for the most rewatchable scene? I'm going to go with stealing the second plane. It's pretty good. Yeah, I like that whole sequence. So the defense for that one is more unintentional comedy. There's just gas and propane everywhere. 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 It's Every- basically There's an so abandoned much airfield. There, yeah. They have a propane thing that is like basically the size of the new LA football stadium, and it just says propane in big letters on it. <laughs> and the plane's going toward it. <laughs> and then there's more gas. There's a gas station. Can we actually also include uh, Colmini's car getting crashed into the uh, the tower in that? Yeah, that's yeah, part that's, of, that's, that's part that's of all, all of that. And that's that's what I'm going with for best scene. I gotta go Cusack. I really like him in this role. I like when he gets to play these characters where he's like a little bit smarter than everybody else. Yeah. Like in Runaway Jury. Yeah. I love when he's in those positions and he gets to just like talk a bit. He seems pretty frustrated by like just being in this movie, but he actually is like one of the best parts of it. Oh, easily. Uh, we're gonna talk about Cusack later. I have the cons taking over the plane. I really enjoy. I have a lot of thoughts on it. Okay. Um Putting the things in your hand. The needle in the in The, the needle wall. in the hand. Yes. I don't know how much that hurts, but I would almost love... What was that show where they reenact stuff or... Mythbusters. Mythbusters. Could you have done that? Could, Could you do a Mythbusters where you where you just have people put that in their hand? Yeah. How it's do you deep pull it in out? There. It's deep in yeah. there. How do you get it out once it's in? Could you push it too far where you just like... You're just well, like they, they usually have like a little, around, like a little button on the end and you just got to get it in there. But... That was like, you got to respect that move because that had to hurt a ton. That had to hurt. And then on top of it, you pull it out. There wasn't blood for some reason. And then to be able to pick the handcuffs with a pin, I've always respected. Mm -hmm. In movies, things that happen in movies that are just really easy to do, apparently. um, Picking handcuffs handcuffs. with a a safety pin. Lecter does that, right? Hannibal, yeah. Throwing the cigarette in slow motion to cause a fire or a lit lighter. (laughs) <laughs> just really easy in person. That would be a good rewatchables video series is us just trying stuff like that. I don't necessarily want to try and get out of handcuffs by burying something in my skin, but I would like be curious about like what happens when you throw a cigarette at gasoline. Well, it was also really <laughs> super windy there because Cusack's Cusack's wig was like flying around during the whole movie. And but somehow like people were able to light stuff and you know, if you have a crystal former smoker, yeah. cigarette lighter, if it's like one mile an hour wind, no, you, have to, like, you have to like put, put your hand your over the thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in action movies, you throw that cigarette lighter and it just the gas goes. I uh, I really like the cons take over the plane. I enjoy every part of that. I like that that Johnny 23 just stays on character. He's be like, forget this plane thing. Yeah. And, uh, and the cage has to prove yet again he's a good guy. Yeah. He's like, I can't, I can't allow this. Nick Cage's accent is great. What would Brim, Wilford Brimley doing Nick Cage sound like this? <laughs> Cursey. Wait, no. Uh. <laughs> this is our new favorite bit of the rewatchable. It actually yeah. would be better Wilford if it was Brimley Malkovich. Person. If it was like Malkovich just being like, love your work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I moved picking nits up. Oh, I moved it to the a much higher <laughs> sixty seven much options. higher space because there were so many things. We talked about the lawyers and just all the issues with that. We talked about why movie bad guys love to antagonize military heroes. Never really fully understood that. I really want to know once and for all whether you could pull safety pins out of your hand like that. Yeah, if anyone's listening, I think you can. Yeah, it's the mailbag at the ringer dot com. If this is on YouTube, if somebody's done this. Somebody should definitely try. By the way, this. do not do this. Yeah, because we're not I'm asking, telling you, we're not going to ask you to do this. Your own pod, if you do this or anything. The uh, the biggest and most absurd point of this movie, other than Cameron Poe somehow going to jail for defending himself, a plane landing on the Vegas Strip. Mm-hmm. I've been to Vegas. I don't even know how many times in my life. The Vegas Strip is always packed unless it's like five in the morning, and even then, it's it's pretty. There's pretty cars. Busy. Yeah. There is no way you're landing on that strip without taking out like a thousand people. I would say Vegas is, is the Vegas strip at five in the morning or four in the morning is actually busier than any other place in the world at four in the morning. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like 
Where'd you stand on that one, Shay? That one didn't bother me. <laughs> it didn't bother <laughs> me. <laughs> no. Have you been to Vegas? <laughs> I've been, been to Vegas, been to Vegas in June. I've been to Vegas twice, but I don't go out of my hotel room after 10 p.m. I assume it's quiet. It's got to be quiet. They call it the city that sleeps at 11. <laughs> is my, is the city my, that goes to bed in time for, <laughs> for Kimmel. Sleeps. Yeah. Hey, uh, we got to take a quick break and talk about Voodoo. Are you familiar with Voodoo, Shay? I am not. A Tell streaming service it. where you can watch all your favorite devices, including smart TVs, Roku, Chromecast, iPhone, Android, phone, phone or web. Stream over 6,000 titles for free. Choose over 150,000 titles to rent or buy in up to 4K quality. Free movies refresh monthly, never gets old. Not a subscription service, no monthly fees. Rent or buy only what you want. Watch as much as you want for free. They asked us on Vudu, they asked me to um, select some movies that were available on the Surface Shay. What did you pick? So here are the movies I picked Okay, that were on there. I was just like, oh, people should see this. True Romance, Zodiac, Six Degrees of Separation, Eight Men Out, Saturday Night Fever, American History X, Singles, Mystic Pizza, The Big Chill, Running Scared, Basic Instinct, Kingpin. The Paul, the Paul Walker Running Scared? No, the other one. Oh, okay. The Gregory Hines they're, Running they're Scared. like the first one? Yeah. Okay. The Michael McDonough music. Yeah. I also like The Paul Walker Running Scared. It's good. It's a good one. Uh, I did Basic Instinct, Kingpin, Cruising, Double Jeopardy. Ashley Judd, a baby. potential rewatchable Ashley candidate Judd. next in 2019. I have a lot of thoughts on that one. And finally, uh, Bloodsport, which I know you have a. I just registered right now when you said Bloodsport. I, I figured my, I'm on my that's phone. That's when the that's uh, yeah. that's when the blood went to your head. That's all you need. So you have in villains. Bloodsport may or not be involved in a villains episode on your Bloodsport podcast was villains. definitely Bloodsport was the first one we recorded and then we ditched it. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We recorded it like as a practice one. Oh. And it didn't make it. Didn't make it? No. Chong because Lee I was on the cutting room floor? <laughs> because I screwed up too many times. And I was like, we got to record You could maybe bring one. it back around, though. Or it could be like your basement tapes. You are unearthed yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll just do it for a rewatchable. So anyway, Voodoo, check it out. Head over to VUDU.com slash rewatchables to sign up and start watching it today. That is VUDU.com slash rewatchables. You can watch the movies with your kids. Stuff like Stuart Little, Free Willy, Pink Panther 2, Zookeeper. Bloodsport. Bloodsport. I watch the Bloodsport on my kids. <laughs> and, uh, and check that out. There you go. Are your All kids right. in, the, in the Con Air zone yet? We haven't seen Con Air yet. Yeah. They can but, watch but the TNT version. Yeah. It's a, I, I don't like the rape angle. Yeah. That's why we didn't do, they didn't do Kickboxer. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. We're not ready for that. What did, how did they handle the Johnny 23 on TNT? They let it happen. They let it happen? Yeah. There'll be a moment where that word Treo is just going to be, these scenes are going to be cut dramatically. I bet. In like 2024. Hey, uh, what's age the best? Malkovich says the title in the movie, which, and he says it two different times. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, which is one of my single favorite things. Of Bruckheimer movies. Yeah. Welcome to The Rock. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love when the degree of difficulty, almost like Bruckheimer, he read the script. Yeah. He's reading it in like the bathtub. And he's just jotting down notes. One of the notes is you didn't say the title in the yeah. movie. Can you work the title in? Can you add something? Nick Cage has aged the best. Nick Cage has become like a punching bag now. Right. People forget the guy won an Oscar and he's a fucking awesome action hero in the 90s. He was, I did the action hero championship belt for Grantland and Nick Cage had the belt for like two, Half three 90s, years. Yeah. Yeah. And he's really especially good in this movie. Like yeah. it's, it's, there's good acting. Well, that's because he's he's an actor first, right? A lot of the guys from the 80s were all action guys, and then they had to act a little bit. Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Seagal, you know? But Bruce Willis, Nick Cage, those guys, Mel Gibson to some extent, like those guys were action heroes who were actors before they were action heroes. Was, mm -hmm. So I think it makes a huge difference. Yeah. He delivers a couple lines good, like a couple jokes. <laughs> yeah. A couple, couple post-murder one-liners. That's the- Rattles uh, them off. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? That's the like secret thing about this movie, what makes it good. Because you've got all of this ridiculous stuff happening. But the characters are like, they're played by smart, good actors. John yeah. Cusack is great. Uh, Malkovich is great. Ving is great. Steve Buscemi is great. Nicolas Cage is great. Like there are, they're good actors yeah. really buying into the role. Malkovich is 100% evil in this movie. He believes everything he's saying. He, he sells it. That's why it's so good. 
Nick Cage's hair, I think, has aged the best. I think this also- This was the best year for Nick Cage's hair. It was getting thin on the back, so he had to grow it out in the- <laughs> Or getting thin on the top, he had to grow it on the back. There's also it was no really explanation wavy. for it. He's got it high and tight when he gets out of the army. Right. He starts growing it out a little bit when he goes into prison. Mm-hmm. But just, like, why prison? Why he would be like, you know what? I'm coming up soon, probably for parole- I'm gonna get out. What I'm gonna do is grow an outrageous yeah. mullet. <laughs> Even though I'm bettering myself in prison and learning Spanish and staying out of trouble, what I'm gonna do is grow this. I'm gonna get the steasiest haircut because that's really what I want Casey and my wife to yeah, see when I get out. I've never is seen. That I look like I've been like the base tech for poison for all of the eighties. <laughs> would you, if you were in prison for eight years, would you tell your daughter not to come see you until you get out? I'd kind of want to see my kids. I would, Give me yeah, something to look I forward to every prison? week. But Hell, he was in a pretty serious prison. Eh. Because he's in the same prison as Billy. <laughs> right? Eh, eh, yeah. He's in a different cell block. Wing, yeah. I'm here eight years. I got nothing to do. My kids are coming two weeks from Saturday. Now I'm still looking forward to it. just depends on what kind of prisoner you want to be, man. It's a little too unselfish. Do you want to yeah. try and blend in and not get in any trouble and not do anything? Or do you want to like run the block? Do you want to be like, I'm like blood in, blood out. Like right. nothing happens without my say-so. Well, he was keeping the low profile, but- yeah. I still want to see what my daughter looks like. Yeah, my, my kids are going to have to make that trip. Yeah, make that trip. Sorry, yeah. this is where dad is. I'm getting out soon. Yeah. It'll be great. <laughs> Chappelle has aged incredibly well in this movie. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot more racially charged enough. humor in this movie that I remember. Yeah. yeah. And Chappelle does a lot of it, but it is fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, well, I had kind of forgotten the racially charged. Yeah. I don't even know if racially charged is the right phrase. No, it's racist. Yeah, yeah. there's like, just, it's racist. racist. I was trying to be, trying to be light, up, light with my touch there. <laughs> yeah, they, there's a couple of lines where you're like, whoa, yeah. Yeah. hey. With the like wounded knee thing. And, yeah. Okay. yeah, and yeah. then like a lot of people calling each other Negro. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's another thing that's aged the best. Sigh! Anata. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, he had prepared for that. So good. He's like, I just need someone to call me Cy one time. <laughs> just, see, just one he's time. He's just walking around like, I'm going to kill somebody. They say my name. I'm doing this. And then uh, finally, this really should have been a uh, most rewatchable scene. Buscemi and, uh, and Cage, the whole, he comes back up after killing the guy in the bottom. Yeah. Yes. What? Can we just play this clip? What if I told you Insane was working 50 hours a week in some office for 50 years, at the end of which they tell you to piss off, ending up in some retirement village, hoping to die before suffering the indignity of trying to make it to the toilet on time? Wouldn't you consider that to be insane? Buscemi just goes to nine other levels. He does most murders are a crime of necessity rather than desire. I'm like, this guy would give the greatest TED Talk of all time. <laughs> yeah. Can Every, we just hear him? He was really selling that. That like lifestyle. Every time I'm watching a movie and somebody makes fun of somebody for having a job, it like kind of hurts my feelings a little bit. Like yeah, I should, I should be. I need to be more of a rebel. Yeah, right, it right. happened when I rewatch when I watched Heat. Is when they like you, have, yeah, you have a regular type games. life. Yeah, and I was like, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, Neil says that. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go to ball games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what age the best and what did I miss? Anything else? What age is the best for you, Chris Ryan? Just Malkovich, the 90s Bruckheimer? Malkovich aged the best for me because it's like on this run of him doing a couple of villains like like in the line of fire. Yeah. And he's just really in the pocket with being the heavy. He's super funny, but he's also really smart and kind of scary in each movie. And he just really knows like exactly how far to go. And it's such a great period of time for action movies because before they were so high concept and they were so like, everybody had to be jacked up, like looking like Jose Canseco yeah. and beating the shit out of each other. But then they were like, you know what? We could probably just get these guys who were like incredible drama actors and they'll elevate this somewhat stupid material anyway, and they probably cost a little bit less money than some of these action guys who are making however many million per picture. Yeah. So it's really, it's really a great performance. Well, it started point. with Die Hard with Alan Rickman, yeah. which we talked about when we did the Die Hard pod, and then led to all of a sudden John Lithgow and Malkovich yeah. and like real right. actors going for these. Is this the first role you think of when you think of John Malkovich? I think of In the Line of Fire. It's weird. I for some reason I go to Dangerous Liaisons. Yeah, I thought he was like throwing 110 in that movie. I, for me, it's Teddy KGB. But yeah, that's good too. Conner is right underneath there. Like he's those two people in the movie. What's cool about Malkovich is he looks pretty much the same in every movie, but has all these different characters that feel different. Yeah, like he does have that in the line, the fire, 
and uh, Con Air well, characters. And in the line of fire, he like does all those disguises too. He like yeah. gains weight, loses weight, puts those fake teeth in and stuff. But like in the Killing Fields, that character is not like any of the other right. characters he plays. Did you see him it's in Mile Twenty Two? Yeah, I did. Mile Twenty Two. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Mile Twenty Two? I, I want to talk about Mile Twenty Two one day. Yes. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up, but with some reservations. With some reservations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What Incredible age the best for you? The best for me is Nick Cage. Do we really? We're we done picking nits. We didn't have any. Yeah, you only had two. I you thought like, you. You were I, like, I have sixty-seven of these, and you did like one. What's? Did, I keep picking nits. What other nits do you have? Well, I, I'm not clear. <laughs> I mean, about, the whole movie is a nitpick. Yeah, but let's just talk briefly about um, dividing up operational priorities within this sort of like the criminals, the 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 sort of the cop side of it, right? So you've got like the DEA guy. Cole Meany who's driving a sports car and he's throwing his weight around. And then you got the U.S. Marshals guy. Yeah. And that's Cusack. But mm-hmm. then the military gets involved mm-hmm. pretty much, I, th- I think, because they've got like these Black Hawk helicopters chasing down the jailbird. And then you've got like like the army involved when they finally get to the air, air base. <laughs> yeah. It's really unclear like who is actually in charge of this like pursuit at various points. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. You would think it would have been better better uh, figured out considering like 20 terrible criminals were on this plane. Yeah, yeah they, like, they, they, they had some time. Had a meeting. I don't understand where they were all going. I mean, like I know they were going to the- They're being transported to somewhere. To like a super prison, right? But like- They were yeah. all going to like a new super max prison yeah. that was supposed to hold the worst, the worst. But then you but, mean where they were going when the, the cartel guy was going to get no, them? No, no, no. Like- why are why are the other non terrible people on there? Well, I'll tell you what. Also, the jailbird, no disrespect, it doesn't seem like a very sturdy craft. That's an old plane, yeah, right? It's yeah. like an old piece it's of like a shit hunker that they're like. Let's just put the most dangerous guys in the world on this plane. I like how you said no disrespect. Like it was going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> what I don't understand the, uh, the. So this is one of my nitpicks. Like, why do we not have a person with a gun on the plane? Well, That's, we did. No, but like, sit there, hold your gun. Not right. like a secret thing or in a lockbox or under the plane. There should be a person up on the little platform with the fucking rifle just in case. That's yeah. all you need. Everybody gets their safe. I was going to do that. this for what's age the worst, but the guy they picked to have secretly armed with the gun mm-hmm. basically pulled the Fredo Corleone and just completely fell apart yeah. immediately. Yeah. He, he, did, uh, he did the Nathan Peterman. The DEA agent? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was bad. He grabbed the answer. <laughs> <laughs> He's like sweating. He's he just seems like so also, out of control. That's also from a, t- a time period of like post Miami Vice, where like criminals really hate DEA agents. Yeah, this is the <laughs> fucking DEA yeah. scumbags, and you're just like, man, you guys hate these guys. <laughs> Any other nitpicks? No, those are the main ones. Right. I was curious about why don't we have a, a person with a gun shooting everybody when we need to? Would have made sense, or or. Why are the pilots, why is it like impossible to get to the cockpit? Yeah. Just like knocking the door and going. Yeah. What's age the worst? You mentioned the Marshall. The Sally can't dance character is rough. Yeah. yeah it's fucked up. Yeah. It's not great. It probably would have cut that one. Even, I got to say, even in the late 90s, that wasn't great. No. There, it wasn't like in 1997 where we were going, you know, that character's good. Mm. <laughs> it's just not, not good. No. It's super awkward. It's weird. Uh, another what's age the worst? How do they get rid of Chappelle at 43 minutes? You know, I was going to say, actually, as a, also as was. a nitpick, I'm not sure that that ends as even, even as well as it does. Like, f- throwing a guy out of a plane at 20,000 feet is going to cause a little bit more damage than what they-, they He should have, like, oh, burst, right? Like a water balloon. Yeah, no, he, it, this would have no been, like, grotesque. He would have gone, like, seven feet deep into the concrete. Yeah. Yeah. He, you don't think he would just land on a car? Yeah, land on the intact. Volvo, and it's like, oh, I ruined your waxing. Yeah, yeah, that's a good nitpick. I just was a Chappelle. Really could have helped the last two thirds of this movie. Like, just get rid of somebody else. Keep pinball. You need the funny. My guess you need is a funny that guy he, they there. only had him for like three days, and he and he did like all his own dialogue, right? Like yeah. he just came up with all. His I don't own think bits. they knew what they had with Chappelle. No, would be my guess. They didn't. This hurts, but um. Cusack's hair. We got to talk about it. Is it bad? It's bad. It's the first time his hair was kind of going back as the nineties went along. Him and Piven. <laughs> and then he in showed the up in the, yeah, him and Piven, <laughs> which is ironic because they're best friends. He showed up for this movie with this flowing mane. Yeah. And there's a couple scenes when he's driving in the convertible and you just see it's, it's like moving this like Trump, huge like it's like the Trump whole, wig, like yeah. flying around. <laughs> yeah. 
It's just tough. You guys <laughs> like Cusack more than I did. In this I, I love Cusack. I, this I, is also like right around Gross Point Blank. Like he's, he's yeah, I'm a big Cusack right fan. Yeah, I feel like he. There's something about him in this movie. Seems like it's beneath him the whole time. There's yeah, this definitely. undertone of I can't believe my fucking agent told me. They to do almost this. seem like they write it like because I know that Rosenberg wrote parts for I think Cusack and Buscemi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was like, wrote with those guys in mind. And like the whole thing is like, Cole Meany is like, loquacious. What yeah. does that mean? Yeah, like right. they're all idiots compared to him. I like him. I like him because he's the only person in the movie who I can look at and be like, oh, I could, that could have been me. Yeah, he's got the sandals on. He looks like a, everybody else looks like a superhero. Here's another him. thing that's aged the worst. The uh, gregarious and hilarious prison guard on the plane. Yes. This guy who's almost like, oh, yeah. he's Making like David Tell. Yeah. And one of the things he says is, My, my, as I look around, I see a lot of celebrities among us. I see 11 current affairs, two hard copies, and a genuine Geraldo interviewee. <laughs> um, all of those shows are long gone. Yeah. <laughs> that has an age well. And then uh, the one part, I, if we can get this clip, it would be great. But I'll just, happy to just do it here, where he says, somebody says, there ain't no God, he doesn't exist. And Nick Cage says, I'm going to show you God does exist. And then there's immediately this cheesy 80 <laughs> guitar solo. It's like, the it's music so bad. does not stop. That was, that was Bubba Gump who, who tells him that. Oh, yeah, I, that, yeah, yeah. Can that I, part's and bad. then he, he walks through a gunshot. Yeah. Just gets shot, doesn't it's, even flinch. Boom, right in his left arm. And he's like, nope. I got to say that I think that the insulin subplot has really aged poorly. Okay. Yeah. Here's this a, is like, do we actually need him having diabetic shock the entire movie? Well, it's really the only way to keep him on the plane, I, right? But why Cage? does he have to be on the plane? Like, all he needs to do is be like, I can't leave the plane without Rachel Takatan because she's going to yeah, get that's what, jumped by Johnny 23. Yeah. So he, he's just like this entire time, Michael T. Williamson, who I really like, is just like, I need my insulin. Yeah. I need my insulin. <laughs> <laughs> I like when he shouts, hey, man, get off my insulin during the riot. Yeah. Like yeah. somebody's another about, oh, guy my bad. is on my fire. Bad. He's like, my insulin. <laughs> yeah. But it does lead to maybe my secret favorite moment in the movie, which is when Michael T. Williamson gets shot. Nicholas Cage is just like, Jesus. <laughs> 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 this is this is a this is gonna be a really dumb question, and I'm just gonna say it. But when I was watching this movie the first time as a kid, and I still kind of wonder this now, they didn't have the a syringe. To put the insulin yeah. in the guy, like, okay, I know you can't do this, you but can't, like, like, just drink it. Yeah, that's what that's what it's gonna be in a jam. I don't know. I mean, I have, blood sugar is a weird thing. I don't know how that works, but I don't know either. Somebody, please anyone out that. there listening, maybe tell us if you can do that. Casting what ifs? Oh, and the other thing that what's aged worse, Johnny Twenty Three. Although yeah. you could argue that was aging badly, even as the movie was coming out. Casting what ifs? Gary Oldman was the first choice to play Cyrus the Virus. No, thanks. Yeah, I'm glad no, that thanks. worked out the way it did. Robert Downey Jr., Charlie Sheen, and Matthew Broderick were considered for the parts of Vince Larkin, John Q's sex character. Because that was right when Robert Downey was trying to get like the career rehab thing going. So he wound up in like, U.S. Marshals a little bit after that. Robert Downey could have j- done it. I got to say, it's a better movie with Robert Downey Jr. He just is. No, I disagree. It's just better. I disagree. He does a better Chris, job. stand better with me on this, I don't, no. I don't think that's true. You guys are wrong. I don't think that's true. Wrong. No. Wrong. Because agree. Robert Downey Jr. Our is DJ, like man. 30% too cool for this role. He's got to be a little bit nerdy. So like when the hand's shaking, when he's got the gun on camera, Poe, you yeah. don't think Downey Jr. sells that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I, I need that. I hear you. I, I will take Downey. I don't love John Cusack. Okay. Why I not? liked him in the 80s. Liked him all the way through Say Anything and then kind of turned on him. And I felt like... I didn't like that he felt like Con Air was beneath him. I could feel it in That's his eyes. Thing. You think you're better than me, John yeah. Cusack? <laughs> <laughs> better than me? I like this movie, John Cusack. <laughs> and then uh, Tim Roth was the first choice for the part of the Marietta Mangler. Thank God that didn't work out. Oh my God, really? So yeah. he's really dipping into the Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, Jesus. Ensemble there. Uh-huh. Deanne Waiters Award. I mean, it's Chappelle or Buscemi. I don't... Know if Buscemi was in enough of this movie? I think he probably does qualify, but I don't I know if there's Chappelle. anyone else. I think you can make an argument for Swamp Thing. He does a nice, so, nice so, job with kind of just a few scenes. He's like a little charming. I, I I feel like he's definitely wildly racist. Like he's that prisoner. <laughs> like he yeah. was in the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> yeah, but he's like I, I I would hang out with him. So who'd you pick for the heat check? Yeah, oh, Chappelle. 
Chappelle, Chappelle. Chappelle is Chappelle's incredible. It's the like only, a nothing party, isn't it? He's really like no role in the movie. Department yeah. of Erections. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The reason you the reason you can't pick Chappelle is because of the racism stuff. Like that. He didn't do it though. Well, I guess he did he the did one. The, yeah, yeah, he did the one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So yeah. I don't know. I still pick him. Okay. Half fast internet research, Kid Rock based American badass on Cameron Poe. It's it's that's exactly <laughs> what it is. That's true. That's exactly what it is. He's the human version of that song. Nick Cage did most of his own stunts. He said, There are explosions five feet behind me, flaming helicopters dropping right behind me, ball bearing bullets over my head. So there was a level of intensity, fear, you might say. It's kind of like my that's Andrew good, Luck impersonation. That's a good Nick yeah, Cage. it's like Andrew Luck crossed with Nick Cage. How many people died in this movie, Shay Serrano? 24. 43. Oof. Yeah, because all those guys died at the boneyard. I think oh, you can make I a case. Those, yeah. You can make a case like another 500 people died There's in Vegas. There's also just like when that, that, that happened at the end of the movie and they're like fist bumping at the Vegas Strip and they're like, yeah, man, I got a body shop for your car. It's like, you guys just lost like 50 American soldiers <laughs> in the desert. Yeah. You wouldn't be like fist bumping about Cole Meany's convertible. Yeah. Um, Wendover Airport in Utah was the stand-in for the fictional Lerner Airfield. It's a fictional yeah. airfield that has a lot of propane. Mm-hmm. Conair's climactic plane crash was originally intended to take place at the White House. Is it really? Yeah. It could have just gone right into Olympus's Fallen. Bruckheimer. <laughs> yeah, Bruckheimer eventually decided Las Vegas was more in keeping with the spirit of the film. Good call. No yeah. shit, Jerry. Yeah. Thanks. Good call, Jerry. <laughs> the TV version includes a scene during the opening credits where Nicolas Cage is in prison writing letters to his daughter, which is also in the movie version. It shows a prison riot, but then Cage's diabetic friend saves him from the burning cell. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. So they didn't give us the whole scene on that scene. So that's why that's he, why he's loyal to that that's guy. Why he's got to save him. Guess what? The movie's two hours. I would have included the scene. Uh, yeah. I think it's a little fat at the end. So I, I don't know if you need more stuff in common. How about less letters to the daughter, more being less saved insulin, from a burning less cell, letters and less insulin, less letters, less yeah, letters, more prison riots. I wish this is a thing. Watching it now, I wish that had happened. I wish we had gotten. I want a Cameron Poe in prison. If he's in there for eight years, give me that movie. Just that alone. A prequel. And before that, a prequel to the prequel. I want to see Cameron Poe in the Army Rangers. I want to see that story. A pre-prequel. I want to see him in the war. So is that Powers Booth doing the the voiceover in the beginning where you're talking about like how great the Rangers are? I think it is. That would be great. A Cameron Poe po prequel. Also- With Powers Booth? Yeah, with Powers Booth. And not to nitpick. Nip, I would just say it, that it. what is the likelihood- that Monica Potter sticks around for, for Nicolas Cage. He does like however many years he does in the army. Oh, and it sounds like before that, he was kind of a fuck up. Cause she's like, I thought you went into the army to like grow up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's in the army. And then the night he gets back from the army, he goes to prison. The night. Yeah. And he shows up on a boat. Which What's I the likelihood understand? that she's just like, I'm just going to throw 11 years away. I think she's married to a realtor in her area by like year four. Yeah. And she's like, sorry. Yeah. Casey's no. got a Casey new dad. needed a dad. Maybe that should have been Con Air too. Is that is Cameron Poe killing the new real estate guy? <laughs> <laughs> He's a realtor and mobile. The crash site was filmed at the Sands Hotel before its demolition in November 96. And what's interesting is they called the Sands. They were like, You're demolishing this thing anyway. Can you wait a couple of weeks? Because we want to film this we crazy crash action a plane scene. Into it. <laughs> and Sands Hotel's like, sure, how much money? <laughs> and they did it. And they actually, that's how it went. Somebody was crushed to death at Wendover during the filming at the airport. Like a real person? A static model of the C 123s in the film fell on him. And that's why the film's credits end with In Memory of Phil Schwartz. That sucks. Schwartz. That yeah. super sucks. Bummer. They chose Trisha Yearwood's version of the song over Leanne Rimes, who was 14 at the time. Mm-hmm. She had the original song, then they weren't 100% sold on it, did Trisha Yearwood, and it became a massive, massive yeah, set. Yeah, huge. True or false, John Malkovich was unhappy during production because the script was being rewritten virtually every day. <laughs> and he had no idea how his character was going to turn out. It reflects in the performance. That's he seems a little true. bit disturbed. He's the entire, angry. Yeah. They're He's like, angry. hey, John, we can you ad lib? Uh, so he's going to say Psy, and you just quickly say Anara. Yeah. And walk away. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. We're changing this again. All right. I'm going to give you these two things. 
you tell me which one you believe. Both of these are on the internet and they completely contradict each other. Okay. Tidbit A. John Cusack allegedly dislikes this film so much that he refuses to be interviewed about it. He's been in a lot of shitty movies, so that would be pretty crazy if this is the one he's like, I won't talk about Con Air. Right. Tidbit B. In 2012, and I did read this link, Cusack told the BBC News website making that making a second Con Air film, quote, would be fun. Quote, would be I'll fun. do it, but no one's offered it to me. Simon West said that he thought that if they did another Con Air, it should be set in space. Space Con Air? Yeah. Con Space? Yeah. Space Con, con Shuttle? Space. Yeah. Con, con Shuttle. Con, con shuttle. shuttle. They have to put the prisoners on Mars? Yeah. That's a good place to put prisoners, I suppose. I'm in. I just greenlit it. <laughs> we, we don't run a studio, but I greenlit it anyway. On the DVD commentary of Chappelle's show, Chappelle said that he improvised most of his lines on Connor. So there you go. Apex Mountain. I only have three people on here, unless you want to throw Buscemi on here. Okay. Ah, uh, fuck it. Let's do him too. Nick Cage, Apex Mountain? Yeah, oh, by far. I mean, is this, this the peak period. of his career? Because now he's combined. No, but is this right here the peak of his career? I think it's The Rock, but you could you could make the argument that this is it. Yeah. I would say this because it made like over 200 million Do you bucks. guys like this, this or The one. Rock more? This, this one for sure. This is so really? much better. Really? Wow. Yeah. So much better than The Rock. Because it's not as quote unquote serious? I don't like Sean Connery. Yeah, Connery's Connery's not that good in The Rock. It's it's like Dirty Secret. No. Shay and I have discussed it in the past. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's Why? not that good. Just watch The Rock. Connery's not that good in it. Well, he's like an old man. Yeah, he's, he's like humping good. around, like just doing Scottish accents. I mean, like, great. That doesn't sound fun. Yeah. Okay. He's another, an old man another, trying to do a Scottish accent. No, Why not am trying I? to do. He's just like so, talking in a Scottish accent. He's like, he's running around Alcatraz. Yeah. He's bad in that movie. I don't Ed like Harris it. is incredible in that movie. He is. Connery yeah. kills it. He's really good. The, the, I will not, I cannot give that order. Is like that's a great, great yeah. scene. But the the thing about the Rock is, if they had never done anything at all and just let the soldiers go, like nobody would have died. Ed Harris was going to shut it down anyway. Right? They should have called his bluff. Right? Right? So you don't like the premise of the Rock? As I much. just don't like. I'm I'm not a big Sean Connery fan. Okay. I like prison movies. I need as much prison as possible. Yeah. I like when Nick Cage is like. Big and beefy. He's a nerd in the rock. Yeah, he's a chemical yeah. super no, freak. Did, but yeah. He was miscast in the rock. I don't want. I don't want that. He's fine in it. It's a good movie. This, but this you is like a Nick Cage us. movie. This is the one. He, okay. For me, this was like he wins the Oscar. He he's for years and years. It's like Nick Cage. He's going to be a big actor. He's going to be a big actor. Uh huh. And he had some some good ones. Nothing great. Never really happened. You know. And then he wins the Oscar. Mm -hmm. And then he makes the rock. And it's like all right. But then. Con Air, and it's like, all right, this guy this is, is a major he's star. He's yeah, going so I for felt like this was This was when I was like, oh, Nick Cage is in our life for the long haul. Yes. Which turned out to be kind of wrong because about five years later, it was over. Yeah. He started making weird It's movies. interesting. I wonder what it would have been like. I wonder what of this generation of guys that we have now, who would have been a good action star because it's kind of all twisted up because they just put on superhero, either superhero clothing or like an Iron Man's case, like a, mm -hmm. a metal suit. So you don't really get that same action movie star that you used to in the 80s and 90s. Well, you, know right. who's, you know who's in this movie now? Who's the Helmsworth from Rush? Chris, right? Yeah, it's Chris Helmsworth. Hemsworth. He's kind of here. Craig's nodding. Chris Hemsworth plays Craig's Cameron Poe? Craig's nodding over there. Yeah. And, and, he's, who, and, and who plays Vince? He plays Cameron Poe, but he tries to do a Southern accent and it goes badly. And about... 30 minutes into the movie, just somehow the character is Australian. Who do you, have play, which is it? do you have like Miles Teller play Vince? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Miles Teller, huh? Not uh, Lucas Hedges? That would be hilarious. Chalamet? Little, they're a little young Chalamet? to be U.S. Marshals. Yeah. How about Chalamet? <laughs> Chalamet you need, you need older. You need older. <laughs> Who is the Malkovich? Army. Army Hammer. It's just the call me by your name cast, but now it's Con Air. <laughs> That's a great question. Who should play Malkovich? It's a tough one. Who would play Cyrus? Jeremy Strong from Succession. <laughs> uh, Apex Mountain, Nick Cage, I vote yes. I vote Chris yes. votes no? Or you vote no? No, I'm going to allow it. Treo? No, he, no. What's his Apex Mountain then? For his career or just like? For his career. For his career. Probably Trey was, was talking. What was the peak of yeah, Trey? It's it's machete. Yeah, you're right. 
I think it's right now, now that he's like a, he's a brand. He has like all these businesses now. Yeah, he does. I think when we gave him a category in the rewatchables, that that's probably, probably that's, what, that's when Malkovich? it off. No, I think you're right. I think it's probably. It's not Malkovich. I think it's, it's like dangerously as yeah. on Sarah. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Buscemi. No, this isn't his, no way. Yeah. his apex. No way. All right. But he can be in That's there. one of the great things about this movie is it's just, it caught a lot of people, but not at their apex. Yeah. They were just all really good at what they were doing. Already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Joey Pants Award presented to the the actor or actress that makes you go, oh, that guy or oh, that girl. But you can't remember what their name is. There's a couple uh, couple nominees. Cruzito. Mm-hmm. I know his name, though. So he's out for me. MC Gaines is Swamp Thing. Yeah. I bet you didn't know that was MC Gaines. No, I did. I That's don't know good. who MC Gaines is. I just know it was Swamp Thing. Was he in the American Badass video? He looks like he would be in that. He might have been. Yeah, there, I don't know. I, I watched. I rewatched it for this thing, and I like Kid Rock at that time. Yeah. And then I watched it. and There's like a bunch of Confederate flags in there, and I was like, "Oh, cool, Ooh. cool, cool, cool." <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, they show one real fast, and then there's like another guy wearing a shirt in it. And it's like then it becomes prominently featured. And you're like, hey, wait, wait a second, hmm. I don't remember this part. Rachel Ticketin, 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 Ticketin. Oh, it's, I think it's Ticotton. Ticotton. Uh, the guard. I, I personally do not think she's a that girl because she's. I know her as her because of Total Recall mm-hmm. and uh, Man on Fire mm-hmm. and this movie. Mm-hmm. I feel like she. That's enough of a body of work. But yeah. Some people might not know this, but the winner, kind is, of a patron saint for the rewatchables by being a Man on Fire and this. It's great. I mean, she's fantastic. Yeah. I actually, wanted a little more for her career. Yeah. Always liked her. She's good she, in Fisher King, and that's Mercedes Rule. I'm sorry. See, this is why she needed better stuff. Yeah. The winner, though, is Renali Santiago, who I texted to earlier. <laughs> He's been, really only been in two movies. He was in this movie as the uh, controversial Sally Can't Dance character. Right. But more importantly, was the guy from Dangerous Minds. Yes. The little guy who ends up going, winning the class prize. Mm-hmm. He feuds with, um, what's the guy's name? Emilio. Emilio. And then uh, has the one-on-one date with Michelle Pfeiffer. That's really a weird scene. Yeah. Yes. Where the other two don't show up and they have like a whole like date and he right. buys a jacket for it. And But yeah, that guy. Yeah. That little guy. I'm voting Monica Potter. No, she's Monica Potter. Is she? Yeah. Because she did, she's in uh, the Prefontaine movie. She was she's in, in Parenthood. Yeah. I think she's. Patch, Patch Adams. She's in Patch Adams. She's like, people know, stuff. This I is, think people know she's Monica Potter, though. But well, you don't know. You didn't know what Renoli Santiago's name was. I didn't know what her name was either. I just I saw Patch Adams like a couple weeks ago, and I was like, "Oh, that's the woman from Con Air." Holy shit! I had no idea. Mm. What do you think, Chris? I'm gonna go Potter. I like See? that. Boom! Yeah. Wow! Okay. I like Potter. Boom! Okay, uh, to, your, to your earlier point, yeah, about her not sticking around with Cage. Yeah, this is a general rule that I have. I feel like you are got you have to stay with somebody who goes to prison as long as their sentence is shorter than the time that you've known them. Like you've got to stand up for that person. Oh, at that oh point. I because you That's think that it, you just owe it to them, or you because it, it them. would be yeah, dangerous yeah. to leave them and have them be able to get out that fast. No, so, no, no. You owe, you owe it to them. Like okay. if Laramie went to prison, like she could she could eat like a like a manslaughter charge and do fifteen, and I'd have to stick around. But right. like if one of my kids went. He can only commit like aggravated assault. Because then you just turn your that, back right? on the kid. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'm like, I'm not gonna stick around for you. <laughs> <This is laughs> only as long as you've known this person. That's good. That's you good you guys shit. are good for about four years. If you get locked up and you're gonna start a new thing, but it's in five years, I'm gonna be like, I gotta go, Bill. Four years, I got you. Five years, That's I'm. It's good out. to know. Okay, keep keep that in mind for when, <laughs> yeah, when you fall in love with somebody. Around? Um, pretty long time. Oh, it gets great. It's a loyal guy, that Craig. <laughs> The Saul Rubinick. They knew! <laughs> this is so easy. I don't think we've ever had an easier winner ever. <laughs> you know who the winner is. Who the winner of this one is? I yeah, think there's the a lot of candidates. Award. No, there's only one candidate. Who is it? Cole Meany? Cole Meany is... Is it Colm or Colin? I think... It, I don't know. I think it's Colm. He is awful in yeah. this movie and he is <laughs> dials it up to insane levels <laughs> but every scene in he's couple, in he overpowers in, everybody in one scene he's bad Cusack overacts the overactor when they're flying behind the plane in the helicopters and Cusack's like oh, he's a friend he's just trying to get home to see his wife and kid don't fire uh, 
<laughs> and the guy is like, don't fire. He is terrible. And he's, I think he was in Mystery Alaska and he was terrible in that too. He yeah, I just think it's just like, he's just out of his comfort zone here. He's just, everything he's dialing it up to like 10 out of 10. Not mm-hmm. great. Um, the Cusack scene is bad. Yeah. Who else would you have for the overacting? There's some good overacting in this movie. Um, I think that, uh, gosh, who would, who would I put in there? I, I got to be honest. Treo kind of dials it up a little bit. He does. It's the most he goes, animated he's yeah, ever been. He goes yeah. for it. He really tries to be evil in this. But He goes for it. Can, I, can we nominate the soundtrack? Oh, yeah, because yeah. it never I would, stops. I would like to nominate the soundtrack. Yeah. It's, it's a good, doing the good most. Nominee. I like that one. Uh, would this movie have been better off with Danny Trejo, Steve Buscemi, or Michael K. Williams? I guess only Michael K. Williams wins or by default. Eight, or no, because it's got two of the three, and we wouldn't want to add it. Like, you know, we don't need to add any more. Yeah, Michael K. Williams could have been on the plane. Oh, sure. It, does he play another prisoner, or is he taking someone's role? He could be your Cyrus in your new version. Ooh. He would be. I, I want to see that. Miles Teller. Michael <laughs> K. Williams Hemsworth and Michael K. Williams in the Con Air reboot. <laughs> I think he's whatever the politically correct version of 2018 Johnny 23 is. Okay, Michael K. Williams. So he's, he's like a takes Bitcoin a guy. He's, like, he's an arsonist. <laughs> he's, he's blockchain. He's an arsonist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, best quote: "Put the bunny back in the box." Boom. Define irony: a bunch of idiots dancing on a plane to a song by a band that died in a car crash. Boom. Or Sorry, boss. There's only two men I trust. One of them's me. The other's not you. Ding, 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 ding. I vote for that one because it sounds like something Shea Serrano has said in his life. I have. I feel like you have, have said, said that said to that. another human being. I've said that to several people. Sorry, boss. But there's only two men I trust. One of them's me. The other's not you. Several, How many people I'm, do you trust I'm, in your life? I only, Am I, I one of those people? I, I trust. I'm like Cusack at the end of the movie yeah. where I've won you over. When we first met, I didn't trust yeah, you. Yeah, but now I'm like, like this guy's going to burn thing. me. <laughs> and then now I'm like, all right, you're one of the guys, Bill. <laughs> I like uh, Cyrus saying, Well, it's not difficult to surmise how Nathan here feels about killing guards. And my own proclivities are uh, well-known and uh, often lamented facts of penal lore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> His dialogue is really it's good in awesome. this movie. I'm upset that he was upset during the movie yeah. about some of the uh, whatever. There's some great quotes in this movie. Probably unanswerable questions. This is one of my favorite ones I've ever asked. Okay. Did they name this movie Con Air before or after they wrote the script? No, bef- before. What are you talking about? Before. That's This is the pitch. Yeah. It's Con Air is the pitch. And they're like, great, you can make it. And he's like, yeah. I got to go write this Somebody, right this is The this- pitch is Con Air, right? Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is how it happened. Somebody was like taking a shower. He's washing his hair. He sees the Con Air bottle and he's like, oh, that's a, that sounds like a thing. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like that a, sounds, pr- a flying oh, prison. Oh, that's like a flying prison. Yeah. And then he's like, oh shit, that's a flying prison. How many people actually died when they landed on the strip? <laughs> it's like in real life, how many people die? Like it's 580? Hundreds, yeah. Hundreds. <laughs> that's grisly. That's a grisly question. 250. Easy. Would Nick Cage really care about saving Baby O and the female prison guard this much when he could just get off the plane and be with his wife and daughter? No. It's redemption. I guess he's like he's redeeming himself. He's just a good guy. So. I don't think so. I, th- I don't think he worries about it. He should have got off and then just like made a fuss. In real life, wouldn't they should wouldn't they have shot the plane down in the first five minutes? Yes. Yeah. Especially yeah. In fact, Cole Mini, Colin Mini, Cole Mini. Him deciding not to shoot the plane down before it lands on the Vegas it's Strip is a fireball defense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He goes to trial for that. Hopefully, yeah. doesn't get the same judge as Cameron. <laughs> he has the same lawyer who's just like, just take the <laughs> take the guilty plea. You'll be fine. <laughs> William Bedford, Bedlam Bedford, who killed everybody in his wife's family, including the dog. Did the wife live? Did he go yeah, back and lived. get the wife? No, she lived. So he wanted her to live with the pain of yes. having her whole family wiped You'd, out. Heartbreak. Yeah. You did this. Heartbreak. Another possible. Heartbreak, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Another possible prequel or postquel mm-hmm. or sequel. This is this William is a- Bed- Bedlam Bedford's wife. Um, Nathan Jones, a.k.a. Diamond Dog, former general of the Black Gorillas, wrote a book in prison called Reflections in a Diamond Eye. Best seller. A wake-up call for the black community. According to the New York Times, they're talking to Denzel for the movie. Could this just be a movie? 
Could Denzel be in Diamond Dog? I almost that wonder whether or not they asked Denzel to be in this movie. That's a good point. <laughs> I thought that might have been like a joke where they asked Denzel to play the Ving Rhames role and he turned it down and they were like, because like the way Cusack says that, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a little bit of a shot at Denzel. Like he, like they had told him, yeah, he should take this role. Denzel's going to be Diamond Dog. Yeah, right. And then he wasn't. He's right. a little saucy when he says that line. Denzel way, would have been great in this. Gotta say, like, not completely unrealistic. He's never really been kind of a sidekick in a movie, and mm-hmm. really in the last twenty five years. But Nick Cage coming off an Oscar, Cusack, Malkovich. Now you get Denzel. Like they, Denzel would have to play Cyrus. You think? Yeah, Ooh, that would have been good. Yeah, Denzel would, wouldn't have done Diamond Dog, but he could have played. So it. he plays him as the Training Day cop, basically. Yeah, it's a different movie. Yeah, different vibe. Who won the movie, Shay? It's only one answer to this. It's got to be Nick. It's Nick. It's like a legacy defining role for Nick Cage. This was it. This was like, I'm going to be the biggest star on planet Earth. Kid right Rock's now. a Rez song about this. Kid Rock is going to. going to be Confederate flags. And it's going to be awkward in 20 yeah. years. Yeah. It was, it was, it's got to be Nicolas Cage. I don't know who else it could be. So here's the case for Bashemi. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Just the case. The case for the guy with four lines. Hit me with it. He's so good in this movie that they clearly added the scene at the end where yeah. it turns out he's playing craps, which tells me that he tested through the roof. <laughs> and Bruckheimer's like, we got to get Buscemi back I think for also one more they were scene. Like, maybe, one, maybe there's a sequel here. And By the way, why wasn't there a sequel here? What do we have to do? You could have just gotten five or six new co- convicts. You know the, what I mean? The Marietta Mangler? Yeah. They're, now they're trying to find them? You could make this movie every two years with new prisoners and do the exact same thing. Yeah. Introduce them all the exact same way. I would the answer watch, is I would Nick Cage. It. Nick Cage, this is his... I actually think this is my favorite Nick Cage performance. It is. It absolutely and is. the one time he really put everything, all the pieces together. He was a talented guy. Yeah. The white really tank was. top tucked into the dad jeans with the mullet. He was rocking Some it. great letters he yeah. wrote. Some amazing, amazing fog. Dear Casey. Good lines. I'm going to bring you a bunny. Hopefully mama kept going to first grade. <laughs> Secretly kind of funny. So is this an action movie uh, first bout Hall of Famer for you? E- easily. Easily. It's yeah. not Mount Rushmore, is it? No, you can't put it on. I mean, if we get four spots for Mount Rushmore, you automatically know two of them. Are, they have to be Die Hard and Predator. So now everybody's fighting for the last two. You're looking for like, you're looking for genre shifting movies. And I don't know that this one did that. Really, we went from this to to Face Off and that was the closest version of it, but it was too close. Yeah. We didn't get a lot of of this. I we got to a think ton about Action Hards. Mount Rushmore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll tell you, Taken might be up there. For you, can, you can put Taken on there because Taken started the whole like an older actor, action movie hero, can do anything thing. Because that's what happens when you sit behind a desk, Shay. <laughs> you get soft. You forget to check the weight of a gun. <laughs> so then you, you've only got one spot left. I don't know if you can give I'm it to not, Connor. I'm not positive I'm with you on Predator. No? Why not? I'd have to make my... No, is a Mount Rushmore? I, I it's pretty so. dated. Special effects are just bad. No, now. the special they're, effects are pretty they good, man. Up. They're pretty realistic. They hold from, up. from 86 yes. with the, the, the video game bad. It's just the thermal thing. vision. It, the lasers are good. The, the predator is the good. The sound is good. The soundtrack, the all of the Bill Duke, Jesse Ventura. Some great body oil in that yeah. body oiled biceps. Yeah. A lot of testosterone in that movie. If you want to knock it off, you can do it. You can like make a case against Schwarzenegger's whole body of work. After all the allegations and stuff, you could be like, we're just automatically disqualifying him. Mm. You could do that. I still enjoy those movies. Okay. But I, I think miss, I miss Arnold. Predator is an, is an important movie in that role. Like in, in that Interesting. conversation. I, ne- I never thought of it as a Mount Rushmore one. Yeah. Uh, Con Air. Beautiful movie. That was as fun as I thought it was going to be. Chris Ryan, <laughs> Chase Ryan. Thank you. We're coming back with one more next week. We're doing a uh, Tombstone. We're going to be putting it up right before Christmas. We will see you then on The Rewatchables. Rewatchables.